What's interesting here is that these gentlemen make products, some of the first products on the market that are compatible with HomeKit. They're also interesting because we're also one of the largest group of, of iWatch wearers. I'm sorry, watch wearers. You see everyone except for <laughs> Rob is the... Uh, the futurist doesn't have one on. Frankie futurist he, doesn't He like didn't it. see the future of um, the watch. Um, these things do a lot more than just change watch faces. What's cool is that you can actually control devices in your home now directly from your wrist. It's a really interesting part of the connected home. Um, maybe you guys can tell us a little bit about what HomeKit can offer a, a manufacturer. What does HomeKit do exactly? Is it just a portal to your phone, or is there more than that? I think that's a, a, I think that's a great question because a lot of people are very, very confused as to what HomeKit is and is not. And there is no device that you put in your home. There is nothing that you have to buy in, in, other than an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, so it's actually software integrated into those into the operating system. It allows for ease of setup is really the beauty of it, along with the Surrey control and another, a number of other functionalities. Um, but uh, MiFi is part of it. I know it just, if you saw the last presentation, you understand that, but MiFi made for iPhone, iPod is what it uh, goes through in order to be tested. So Apple has a certification process, so it gives you kind of peace of mind in terms of the product is gonna work in the, in the marketplace. But ease of setup and Surrey integration, I'd say are the two biggest functionalities on the operating system. Yeah, I think from a consumer standpoint, I, I, I double down on that and say, you know, Wi-Fi enabled products in your home are really awkward to set up. Um, and one of the objectives that uh, Apple has had and we're working on with them through HomeKit is uh, a faster, easier Wi-Fi setup. And you'll see that in our products as they roll out. And then, you know, the platform, the ecosystem of being able to work with more products in the home you know, that vision is something I'm sure we'll talk more about, um, but the idea of making it easier for manufacturers like us to have products that work together, um, I think is part of the vision that's coming down the road. I think, we're, I think we're all looking for a more holistic experience, and right now, as many of us know, it's a little clunky as we go through, and uh, I think with the entry of Apple into the space, um, you see some other megatechs jumping into the space, we're really gonna be able to focus a little bit more on what's that holistic experience like. Um, the fact is most people go shopping, for, at least in the devices that we represent, they go for that specific device. They're not necessarily looking for home automation per se. So if we can provide them with an excellent product that does exactly what they bought it for, and we do that well, and we add the convenience factor of connectivity and uh, that kind of uh, helpful integration rather than just kind of, hey, it connects, but, but why? Um, we think that's gonna be beneficial and we think that's good, what's gonna generate this kind of exponential rise that everybody's been talking about. It's also a familiarity thing too, right? I, I imagine that Apple dictates the sort of interface that you would use on an app that you control rather than just providing the, uh, the glue that connects various products, right? Well, I think you're talking about everything from, you know, hey, how are we gonna ensure that what we're doing is uh, private and secure in that things are working in, in a consistent fashion. Again, that talking again about that you know, holistic experience so it's not so clunky. I would say, I think the other big differentiating factor is that HomeKit isn't um, building an ecosystem. Apple, I would argue, to arguably say that has one of the largest ecosystems in the world. So rather than starting from the ground up and having to develop an ecosystem, you're riding on the back of an ecosystem that's very well known, that's established, that has the consumer's trust in the, at the end of the day. And so we really saw that as an opportunity to launch product into that space where there's 800 million plus users um, that enjoy technology um, and how we can surprise and delight with some very cool automation. So I'm, I'm not a manufacturer, I'm a, I'm a researcher, and I think one of the biggest things from a consumer perspective is right, consumers aren't sure how products connect, Zigbee, Z-Wave, you know, it's just a bunch of letters. So I think it, it makes a, for a more kind of seamless shopping experience. You're looking for a HomeKit approved logo as opposed to any kind of compatibility with other products that you own. And I think to your point about the, the ecosystem, you can be sure that it's going to play nicely with all of the devices that you own. And the more HomeKit certified products you bring into your home, potentially those products will connect and interoperate with each other more easily. So I think it takes a lot of the sort of the guesswork and the you know, technology stuff that consumers really aren't interested in doing uh, out of the equation it makes it easy to, to buy products.